drums. Franz, I shall go mad. There, there, my dear. You must rest. Remember, Martha, you have another life to think of beside your own. Then go for help. With your knowledge of the jungle, you'll get through. You forget, Martha. I can't leave you now. You will need a doctor soon. They killed us and got it over with. Sorry, France. The natives will never attack us here. Why, Doctor? Why? They're afraid. Of us? No, of this place. This cave is infested with bats. Bats? Are they afraid of bats? Vampire bats. Do they believe in that silly superstition? It is no superstition, my friend. It's true. The natives call them birds and fear them mightily as well they may. Monsters swoop down upon their victims in the night. They fasten themselves to the throat and drink the blood. Just like Frida. And drained of blood he is. Just like the other. What manner of a monster could this be? A bat! A bat. What? Here comes the good professor. He can help us up, anyone can. Professor Chris Tong. Jean Va? Yes. You found him in the cave. Like Frida. He is the same? Yes. The throat torn open, too. Jean Handel says the monster is a bat. A larger one than we've ever seen. True, good doctor, true. But still, a bat. Some huge and loathsome thing. It fastens to their throats. It drags them to the caves. Then what else but a bat that only sees at night? Can they be right? Of course not. Tell them, sir. No bat could tear their throats as if with teeth and drag their bodies to the cave. There are stranger things upon this earth than you could know of, David. What? But a vampire would attack like this. Then you both believe that this monster is a bat? If one could be so large, then I say yes. And you, sir? It is strange. It never happens in the light. 
It is not yet given to us to know whether or not this monster is a bat. But of one thing we are sure, that both these hideous things have happened after dark. Until this dreadful thing is caught, shun the dark. For no reason leave your homes when dusk has fallen. Bolt your doors and burn it. Give this monster no opportunity, and you are safe. Now, go to your homes and guard yourselves with light. for Jamba. You, my child. I'm that vexed by this time of day. What with the townsfolk trooping in and out, muddy boots on my clean floors, and us liable to be murdered in our beds. Have they found what did it? They have not, and unless they do, there'll be another. Mark my words. Little Frida last week, Janva last night. Oh, Mother Molly, it's horrible. Horrible it is. What's in the basket? <laughs> Roses for my garden, fresh lavender for your linen, and plum preserves for your table. <laughs> the professor's table, you mean? You'll make him a good wife, Marguerite. The professor is blessed. Oh, I hope so. I want to be a good wife. But, but the professor's so good, so... Oh, Mother Molly, do you think I'll ever be like that? The professor lives for the poor, my child. The poor in spirit as well. But these ingrates take advantage of his goodness. If I hadn't made a rule that they couldn't come before this hour, I'd have them underfoot all day. With muddy boots? <laughs> but surely now something must be done. There's not a problem that isn't brought to him. Which cow to buy? How to make up with their sweethearts? They even ask him when to kiss their wife. <laughs> And that's what comes of being wise and good. Do you think he told himself to marry me? That's wisdom, too. But these townsfolk and their problems fill his days. He has to write his books by candlelight. I really fear for him sometimes he gets so tired. But after you are wed, you'll make him rest. I'll try. David says a saint needs no rest. You're very fond of David, aren't you, child? Why, yes, of course. <laughs> Naturally, I've known him ever since we were children. I understand. But remember, child, it's better to marry safely. Of course. That is, I'm very proud of the honor Professor Christon has done me. They're beginning to arrive, taking advantage of the professor's goodness, tiring him all out. Well? Wipe your feet and come in. Hurry up. Don't let all the flies in. Not in the good chair. Over there on the bench. Are you very busy? When you're here, never. <laughs> come, sit down. It was nice of you to come to see me. I brought you some flowers. How like you. To bring them? You know what I mean. You're like your flowers, Marguerite. It's a very pretty speech, Professor Christan. When are you going to call me Paul? I mean to, Paul, but somehow I forget. You see, 
You're a very important person. And you're a very young one. I'm not a child. My tapestry won the prize at the fair. And pride goeth before a fall. <laughs> <laughs> oh. What is it, Zan? I have only just returned, Master. I wanted you to know that I'm here. I'm sorry I was startled, Zan. I didn't mean to frighten you, Miss Marguerite. Would you put these flowers in water, Zan? They're lovely. You may have one, Zan. I brought them to Professor Christan. Thank you, Miss Marguerite. Marguerite. Oh, I'm sorry. Truly, I am. But he frightens me so. He's... he's hideous. Beauty or ugliness is only of the soul, Marguerite. I know. But after all these... Zan has devoted his life to me. Would give it for me joyfully. That isn't ugliness. You saved his life. He feels it belongs to you. Gratitude is beauty. Forgive me. I'll try not to be afraid of him. We can never be afraid of what we love. If we love our brother, how can we fear him? I know. I'll try. I must go now. Father isn't very well. Don't worry, dear. The doctor told me not to worry, but somehow I can't help it. Come and see him later if you can. Your visits help him so. I will. Goodbye, Marguerite. Goodbye, Paul. Can't you see, David, there isn't anything to be done. But you don't love him, Marguerite. Oh, but I do, David. I do. You mustn't say that. He's so good and kind and generous. I know that. You don't have to praise Professor Christon to me. I think he's wonderful. But that isn't love. You respect and admire him and even revere him. But that isn't enough to marry for. I am honored the Professor has chosen me, David. And I'm going to try and be worthy of him, a good wife. You'll be a good wife. You'll bake your bread and sew your seams and keep your copper polished. Please, I'd better go. David! That's love, Marguerite. Don't be frightened. Don't you see that you can't help loving me any more than I can stop loving you? Oh, don't you see we can't let this happen to us? Oh, I mustn't listen to you, David. It's wrong and wicked. I'm betrothed to Professor Christan. Anyway, it's too late. The bands have already been published and Father would never retract. Besides, the honor is too great. I know. And I have nothing to offer. And if you weren't betrothed, your father would never consent. He's hardly more than civil when we meet. Oh, you mustn't think that, David. Father isn't well. And then this dreadful bat preys on his mind. A bat, these superstitious fools. What do you think it is? I don't know, but I'm sure it's not a bat. I should be with Father now. I've stayed far too long. Goodbye, David. Reach home before dusk. The doctor said no. But I wanted to be sure you agreed with him, Professor. Oh, of course I do. The doctor knows his business. Oh, there, steady now. Here. <laughs> it wouldn't do to drop him, you know. I'm all right. It's just that I didn't sleep all night. He was so sick. Well, I'll help you home with him. No, you won't, Professor. You're tired. And I'll take them home. Wait here while I get my shawl and lantern. 
Good evening, Professor Christon. Good evening, Maria. Maria, didn't I tell you to wait outside for me? Mother, please. May I not show Professor Christon my school papers? Well, of course, Maria. Here, give them to me. Oh, well, that's fine, Maria. You're making great improvement. That is because of your help, Professor Christon. Mm. And you see, my writing looks almost like yours. Much better than mine, my dear. Because mm -hmm. I'm ready. Oh, you're so good, Professor. I'm glad to be of service, my dear. Come, Maria. Goodbye, Professor Christophe. Goodbye, Maria. Don't forget to look at my papers. I'll do it right away. my friend, Katrina Malamet. She's missing from her bed. Her mother heard her scream. No, you don't think... Oh, yes, Mr. Bat. He's got Katrina. I know it. I know it. What shall we do? Quick, to the caves. It may not be too late. Oh, to the caves. Oh, Down there. 
Katrina. Another victim of the monster. Which of us will be next? Surely there's a curse upon us all. You superstitious fools with your talk of monsters and bats. There is no bat large enough to carry a human body to the caves. What else then, David? A man. He could even be one of us. Someone we might least suspect. No! It's a bat. I know it. Oh, you know it. Perhaps you've seen it then. Have you? No. No, never, never. But the master says it is a bat. A monster. A monster. Yes. A human monster. Master! Davy there thinks the monster is a human. And it may be one of us. Tell him that it isn't true. Why, David, Professor Criston is right. Come, Zan, let us go home. Neighbors. Neighbors. Let us not submit like cattle to these murders. Instead of running home as soon as the sun is down, let us remain on guard throughout the night that we may catch this killer and destroy him. Who will volunteer to watch with me? Not I, David. I can guard my family better at home. Yes, I will be indoors with lights. You're right. Let us go to our home. So many candles, good woman. With a monster abroad, sir, light is our only protection. A monster, you say? I do. A monster bat which swoops down upon its prey in the dark and leaves great gaping holes in their throats. Come closer. I'll stay here. Could you stay, uh, say, over there just as well? I could. That's better. Now, what is this old wife's tale? No tale it is, sir, but the truth. Within a fortnight, three of our townsfolk have fallen prey to this very thing. And so, the light? It never happens in the light. I see. Anders! Paul, my dear, dear friend. <laughs> you haven't changed a bit. Nor you, after all these years. <laughs> oh, you come in troublous times, my friend. So this good woman has been telling me. Oh, this is my housekeeper, Mother Molly. Ah. And this is Dr. Bizet, Mother Molly. My foster father and my very best friend. Ah. Then I leave you in good company while I prepare a room for Dr. Bizet. Well, here. Sit down, and uh, let us talk. What brings you here? You wrote of your betrothal? Of course I came. <laughs> well, I'm glad you come. I need you, Anders. So? I've had a curious malady of late. Which is? I don't know. Strange headaches, followed by vagueness and, and exhaustion. Well, enough of my small woes when we are besieged by tragedies. These murders? All unaccounted for. I'm not jesting when I tell you that the villagers fear a monstrous bat. The old superstition, a vampire bat. Oh, well, there, there's time enough for that. Uh, ale! <laughs> Here. Allow me. To our reunion. You couldn't help but love her, Anders. Her beauty of face is a true reflection of her soul. Then that must be Marguerite. 
surely no one was ever more beautiful. It is. Professor Christian. My dear. This is Dr. B.J. Marguerite, my foster father and my good friend. Oh, and this is David, Marguerite's childhood schoolmate. Paul has told me the truth about you, my child. I confess I doubted him until I saw you. My father will be glad to see you both. You have some refreshments, of course. Marguerite, I must go. David, after your long walk, he carried my heavy basket all the way. And besides, you said you had the whole afternoon. I did, till now. It's well to reach your home before dusk. I do not fear a bat, sir. Indeed? Then what do you think this monster is? A fiend, playing upon the village superstitions. I see. Perhaps you're nearer right. Good day. Good day, Professor. Sir. Marguerite, your father. He's feeling more himself today. Do you think it could be those dreadful tragedies that are preying on his mind? Perhaps. I only wish I could keep you from worrying about him. Professor Christian is here, Father. And this is his friend, Dr. Pizet. I am honored, Doctor. And I. You'll have some cordial? Your own? Of course. Some cordial, John. And some of those fresh cakes. Yes, ma'am. Marguerite's cordial is the best in the village. You are blessed in having such a daughter, sir. Thank you. I hear you also raise the most perfect roses, Miss Marguerite. Oh, I assure you it's quite by accident, oh. Dr. Bizet. I tend them daily, and as for the rest, they just grow. But surely I may see these marvelous accidents? Of course. I'll show you my garden if you wish. I should be grateful. Will you join us? Later, my dear. Marguerite is worried about you. I know. The doctors told me I haven't long to live. The knowledge makes me restless. And Marguerite? Marguerite must not know. And of course you love Paul deeply. Oh, of course. That is, I worship Professor Christon. Paul, I mean. He's such a great, good, wonderful man. Oh, I will make him a good wife, Dr. Bizet. And I'll try so hard to, to live up to him. I don't think you'll have to try, my child. Like these flowers of yours, you can't help but reflect goodness and beauty. Oh, but I do have to... That in itself is goodness. Thank you. See the wind? The bat's abroad tonight. He won't need his huge wings in all this snow. <laughs> what fiend has an ague each time a candle flickers? <laughs> I? You have a lying tongue in you, Anna. I'm not afraid. <laughs> Tis well to be afraid when the devil hath spewed such a loathsome creature as this upon us. Well, I'm not afraid, I tell you. You're right, old woman. Tis ungodly not to be afraid. <laughs> there, the mistress wants you in her room. Oh. Then you think that Marguerite doesn't love me? Nothing of the sort. The child loves you devotedly. She worships you. You're a kind of god to her, to be lived up to, to be worthy of. I suggested that she is not in love with you. The difference is vast. But if you're right, why hasn't she told me? Do you think her capable of hurting anyone? Above all, her idol? Besides, it's just possible the child doesn't know the difference. Understand me, Paul. I may be entirely wrong. I simply wanted you to be alert to a fact you may not have realized.
soft to the child. She's incapable of dissimulation. You'll know. Forgive me, Anna. I'm sorry. I'm upset and restless. Oh, I feel as if something dreadful were going to happen. There, there, mistress. We are all bolted in with Cain's burn. What can happen? I know. I guess I'm silly. But I'm so worried about my father. Going out, Professor Christan. To Marguerite's mother, Molly. Do you think I'll be safe with her? All her goodness couldn't keep that away. But you need light. A full moon. But you walk through the wood. Ah, true. I'll take a lantern. Must you go tonight? Yes, Mother Molly. I'll keep the house well lit. The devil himself couldn't keep me from doing that. Professor is retired, Mother Molly. I wish he had. I'm plagued at the thought of him being out in this wild night. Out, you say? I do. To Marguerite, he said. Marguerite? You fear for the Professor? I do. Quick, a lantern. Yes. Be frightened. It's just the wind. Anna, it's father. Hurry, let him in. It 
Miss Marguerite. I'm here. What happened? We don't know. Look. Anna. The bat. Bring some water. Yes. There, master. There. Now lean on me. Is he hurt? No. What happened? He swooned, master. You were with him? I saw him leave. I feared for him. I followed. And then? The lantern went out. He was unconscious. I have only now succeeded in restoring him. Yes, I... I remember. The lantern went out. It was dark. Dark, you say? Yes. Very dark. I can't remember anymore. You swooned, Master. We are near Marguerite's house. Can you walk? Then come. Come quickly. What happened? We heard a scream, sir, and found her like this. And Marguerite? She's unhurt, sir. She swooned when she saw this. like the other victims? But, Doctor, do you really believe it could have been a bat? What else? I saw a figure gliding away in the dark. And David was right. The monster is a man. For the sake of those who love you. Yes, even for the sake of this hideous, evil-ridden fiend. Guard yourselves constantly. Burn every candle, every lamp you possess through every minute of the dark. Stand on guard. Bolt your doors. Don't move outside your homes. And above all, don't for an instant be without a light. Now, go to your homes and pray. How's Marguerite? The shock did her no good. I was afraid to bring her. And you? Oh, all right. Then hurry home to Marguerite and stay with her. Every instant, the professor means. Don't leave her alone with anyone. Anyone at all. Do you understand? I have your promise. I shan't leave her. With no one at all. I understand, Dr. Bizet. Good. <laughs> What's the matter? What is it? I saw it. The fiend, he's there in the shadow. He's bent and crooked and evil. Evil. Pass her in there. Yes. <laughs> There's your fiend, Professor Christon Zan. Yeah, your <laughs> scream scared him away. <laughs> Master, you have nothing to fear from Zan. To your homes, my friends. Come, my son. Perhaps the woman wasn't so wrong. Three killings there were near the professor's house. And Zan was at Marguerite's last night. 
What good could there be in a hunchback? But if he weren't good, the professor wouldn't have him. How do you know? Oh, the professor's so good himself, he wouldn't believe it anyway. He was near every crime. Don't you see? I don't know where I was. In a swoon, yes. But it's incredibly odd that I was unconscious during every one of these crimes. These headaches, what are they? Why do they come on me? Last night, Dan, tell me, tell me. Unconscious, Master. Yes, but what did I do? Tell me! You laid it on the ground while I tried to revive you. From the moment I swooned? You swear? I do, Master. On that holy book? I swear. Until this malady is passed, Anders, I cannot marry Marguerite. You're right, Paul. You must tell her. Tonight, while your mind is made up. No, 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 Master, don't go. Why not? The fiend, he may be abroad. Your master doesn't fear the fiend. Go, my friend. Release the girl. Light must not go out. Why do you follow him? I fear for him. The fiend. You lied. You lied upon that book. You were not with him every moment in the wood. The truth, man. You must tell me the truth. I have sworn. I beg you, David, not to do this. They must know. Loving me, you cannot wed the professor. I haven't said so. There's no need. We know. My father must return in a moment. Oh, please, David, wait a little while. Marguerite, you're in danger. I know it. I can feel it. My place is by your side to watch over you, protect you. Oh, Marguerite, I'm afraid to leave you alone. My father. Oh, David, I beg you, if you love me, go. All right. Thank you, my child. You seem worried, Marguerite. What is it? Oh, Father. Oh, that's all right. You lie, I say, all lies. Without his light, you couldn't find him in the woods. You were not together. My master, I must be with him. Why? Tell me why. The truth, man. Now is the time to tell it. I must know. I want to help you, fool. But before I can, I must know. My master, please don't. What do you fear for him? If you are the monster, your master is safe from you. If he is the fiend, he can fear nothing from himself. No, no, don't say such things. Then, then it's true. And you, you knew. My poor forsaken friend. Not forsaken, sir. True. Not forsaken. When did you first know? Frida. She was passing near the house. I heard her scream. Then I saw my master. I myself carried her body to the caves. Then I brought him here. He never knew he'd risen from his bed. And then? After that, I followed every move. 
But it was always my mischance to be too late. What about the young woman, Katrina? The same. Again, I was too late. You can cure him, Dr. Bizet. Take him away. Tonight. New places, new faces, rest in your good care. No one here will ever know. We'll decide that when he returns. We shouldn't have let him go. I feared that Paul might be the fiend. The boy was marked at birth. But he had to release Marguerite from her promise. But Miss Marguerite, do you not fear for her? Her father has given me his oath. He would not leave her. Still I fear. We should be with my master. Yes, yes, come. You may be delayed. I'll go on. What is it, my friend? We think we know who the fiend is. We must see the professor. He is not here. He is at Marguerite's house. And Jean? There, too. Father, I wish you'd tell me what's worrying you. Perhaps I should. I'll go. Oh, Paul. Good evening, sir. Come in. Thank you. Oh, Marguerite. Professor Dear child. You're just in time. Father was going to tell me something. Oh, let that go now. You have happier things to think about. You're not leaving us? Of course. I, I'd rather you stayed. Remember your oath to Anders. Why, that couldn't include you. Perhaps it's as well. We are well lighted. And what I have to say is only for you. Please. Marguerite, lately a strange malady has possessed me. Something I can't explain, nor has my good friend as yet uncovered it. What have you done? Relight it instantly. But I, I have no tapers. What is it? What's wrong? I only thought to spare your eyes. Forgive me. I'm not quite myself. It was kind of you to blow it out. Your headaches? Unbearably at times. It's the malady of which I spoke. The pain becomes so great. Sometimes I swoon and am unconscious for a while. I'm sorry, Professor. Paul. Hmm. But after we're married, I'll take such good care of you that these spells will disappear. That's what I came to say, my dear. There'll be no marriage till this malady is cured. But why? I couldn't burden you with so much care. I love you too well, Marguerite. That's no care. I'd be grateful for the chance to serve you, even in so small a thing. Serve me? Of course you would, my child. But you see, I can't accept. I release you from your promise. Until you're well? Until I'm well. I pray it won't be long. 
Whatever happens, will you remember this? I love you, Marguerite. Stop! You foolish child, you don't know what to do. But it was torturing your eyes. I'll get tapers. All the lights must be lit. I feel Seraphine, a candle still burns, and the moon makes the room bright as day. There's even a fire. It's out. No matter. See how bright the room is. And besides, how could I be afraid when I'm with you? Marguerite. I haven't told you all. I'm afraid. Afraid. Of the monster? No. For the monster. I'm afraid I am the fiend. You are ill to talk that way. No, it's worse than that. I don't know what I did last night until Zan found me in the wood. What does Zan say? He swore he, he saw me fall and was with me every minute. Well, surely that proves... He may have lied. He didn't lie. It's only your illness that makes you think these dreadful thoughts. Do you really think so? If I only knew, if I only could be sure. You shall know. I'll prove it to you. Marguerite, what have you done? The monster cannot kill with light. Sit down, Paul. Here in the dark with me. And soon you'll know you're not the fiend. My head. It's odd it should be worse without the lights. Lie back and rest. I'm afraid. No need to be. Marguerite, it's growing dark. Only a cloud crossing the moon. A light. Quick, a light. Rest still. It will soon pass. My head. A light. A light! Paul! soon come to. What happened here? I heard a scream and I rushed in. From where? You swore not to leave her. Why, she was with Professor Christon. Were you here? I was outside. I feared for Marguerite and waited on the terrace. Are you sure, Marguerite? Quite sure? Positive. The monster held me fast. I felt his bare teeth against my throat. I screamed, and as I did, 
Zan came through that window. How can you be sure? Outside was lighter than it was in the room. I couldn't mistake his limping, crooked form. It was the last thing I remember before I swooned. Then who... who was the fiend? I don't know. Uh, David, go. Zan must be saved. She's coming too. Will you be good enough to leave us? There he goes. He's headed for the cave. We'll trap him there. Come on, man. Anders, Anders, what is it? I, I swooned. The fiend attacked Marguerite. Is she hurt? No, she was saved in time. Anders, was it I? Anders, tell me. Tell me the truth. I will. It started nearly 40 years ago, Paul, in the darkest depths of Africa. The only white people were your parents and my dearest friend, Dr. Dupre. A monstrous bat had fastened to your mother's throat. They beat it off, but the harm is already done. You were born that night, Paul, condemned to live. It was Dr. Dupre who buried your parents and a few years later told me all. Before he died, he entrusted you to my care. He warned me to watch for your deadly mark, but you grew normally and when manhood was reached, the danger seemed past. Then why, why has it come upon me now? Exhaustion, overwork. And if I'm not cured, I'll go on and on. The attacks will come closer and closer together until you will entirely become the loathsome thing your madness makes you. Isn't it strange? They never caught me. Not strange at all. Your faithful Zan knew from the first and protected you. Even now, he's led them off to give you an opportunity to escape. Escape? After what I've done. But Anders, Zan is in danger. We must go to him. Come. Dr. Pisset can cure my master's malady. I pray thee, save him. Save my master.
Marguerite was alone with Professor Cristan. He lied! He lied! He lied to Master Master! I am not as guilty! Then speak the truth. Burn the blasphemer! Burn it! Burn it! Burn it! He's in league with the thief. He wants Marguerite for himself. Professor Cristan, you tell us what to do. Please, 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 the monsters work. You sought to kill a fiend. Well, I am he. What? Yes, I am the one you sought. I even sought myself. But believe me, I didn't know until tonight. What? Zan knew and tried to save me from myself. Anders, my friend, I have only one thing left to do. Paul. Professor Cristan is... Gone, my child. There is no longer any fiend. Now live in peace, my children. 